Welcome to our lecture online. Given the following circuit, we have a source 220 uh, RMS voltage with a zero degree phase angle. We have an impedance representing an impedance in the circuit lines, and we have an impedance representing the impedance of the load. Now what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the total impedance, the current in the circuit, the voltage drop across the line, the voltage drop across the load, the complex power across the line and the complex power across the load. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. First of all, getting the total impedance would simply be the sum of the two because they are in series. So Z total would be equal to Z of the line plus Z of the load. So it would be uh, 4 plus J2 added to 2. 15 minus J10, which would be equal to 19 minus J8. And then, of course, if you want to write that in the magnitude and phase angle format, that would give us 19 squared plus 8 squared. Take the square root of that. That would be 20.6. So that would be equal to 20.6 with a phase angle of... 8 divided by 19, and uh, take the inverse tangent of that would be 22.8, and that would be negative, negative 22.8 degrees. All right, so there we go. That would be the total impedance, depending upon what format you want it in, of that particular circuit. Next, we want to find the current. Now, the current I by Ohm's law is equal to V over R. In this case, R will be the impedance. We need the total impedance, the voltage of the source, so this would be equal to 220 volts with a phase angle of 0 degrees, divided by, and let's take this format right here, 20.6 with a phase angle of minus 22.8 degrees. So it would be equal to 220 divided by 20.6. That gives us 10.68. Uh, so it would be 10.68. Eight. That would be in amps with a phase angle. When we bring this up, that would be a positive 22.8 degrees. And of course, that would be in terms of amps. And this would be in terms of ohms, of course, because that's the impedance. All right, so now we have the current to the circuit. Next, we need the voltage drop across the line. The voltage drop across the line would be current times impedance. So voltage drop across the line would be equal to the current, which we have here, times the impedance, which would be zero. Well, that would be the line, right? I'm not talking about load the line here. So let me write the line. Okay, that will work. So the total current would be equal to uh, 10.68 with a phase angle of 22.8 degrees. And we're going to multiply that times Z of the line, which would be 4 plus J2. Of course, to multiply that, we need to write that in the magnitude and phase angle format. So this is equal to 10.68 with a phase angle of 22.8 degrees. Multiply times, that would be 16 plus 4, that would be 20, the square root of 20, which is 4.47. With a phase angle of 1.5, take the inverse tangent, 26.6. 26.6 degrees. There we go. Now we can go ahead and multiply those two. That means we get uh, 10.68 multiplied times 4.47. That gives us uh, 47.7. So the voltage drop across the line is equal to 47.7 volts with a phase angle of adding those two together, 22.8 plus 26.6. That's 49.4 degrees. And so this is the voltage drop across the line. Now what about the voltage drop across the load? Okay, that would be the voltage drop across the load is equal to I times Z of the load, which is equal to 10.68 with a phase angle of 22.8 degrees, multiply times the impedance of the load, and let's go ahead and do that. That's 15 square plus 100. Take the square root. That's 18.03. Uh, 
18.03 with a phase angle of, that's a 10 divided by 15, take the inverse tangent, that would be negative 33.7 degrees. Like that. So multiplying that together, we get 10.68 times 18.03. That's 192.6, 192.6, uh, with a phase angle of 22.8 minus 33.7 is a minus 10.9 degrees. And that, of course, would be in terms of volts. And this, of course, would be in terms of volts as well. Okay, and is that RMS volts or is that, yes, because we start with an RMS voltage, so this is the RMS voltage across the line and across the load. Now we need to find the complex power across the line. Okay, how do we do that? Okay, so complex power across the line is equal to VRMS times I RMS, and we need the complex conjugate of that. All right, so V RMS of the load of, um, let's see here, V RMS, hmm, how do we do that? Ah, it's V RMS of the source times, oh no, 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 that would not be the case. This would be V RMS of the line. So we have V RMS of the line right here times I RMS complex conjugate. So this is equal to the voltage across the line, because we're only doing the line portion, times the current which runs through the whole circuit. So we end up at 47.7 with a phase angle of 49.4 degrees, and we multiply that times the current, the complex conjugate of the current, which is 10.68 with a phase angle of, now we have to take the complex conjugate, so it's a minus 22.8. So this would be equal to 47.7 times 10.68. That would be 509 with a phase angle of 49.4 minus 22.8, which is 26.6 degrees. And that would be, of course, the units of that would be what? That would be... Uh, for the S for the line, that would be V times uh, A, voltage ampere, would be the complex, would be the complex power of the line. So it would be S of the line. And finally, we take S of the load, which is equal to V RMS of the load, multiply times I RMS, take the complex conjugate of that. So this is equal to V on the load, which is 192.6 with a phase angle of minus 10.9 degrees. If we multiply that times I RMS, the complex conjugate, which is 10.68 with a phase angle of minus 22.8 degrees. All right, that will be 192.6 times 10.68 which is, well, let me try this again, 1992.6 times 10.68 equals 2057 with a phase angle of, uh, that would be uh, 10.9 plus 22.8, that would be minus 33.7 degrees, and that again would be in terms of volt amperes, which is the complex power across the load. So you can see that once you have the identification of the impedance, the current, and the voltage, then you simply follow the equations for the current, it's voltage divided by impedance. For the voltage, it's current times impedance. And for the complex power would be voltage times the complex conjugate of the current. So using these three equations, we're able to solve the problem. And that is how it's done.